Hi again, and welcome to another episode of The Really Show. I'm your host, Aaron Ross. Today's show, Uncivil Rebels Part 2, Newton Knight. Bam. And don't forget, we would really appreciate it if you would subscribe. Born in 1873, Newton Knight was a farmer in Mississippi in a county that didn't have very many slaves. Rich Southerners were the ones who benefited mostly from slavery, not the common people like Knight. Er Exactly. Newton was a pretty upstanding guy, and by the beginning of the Civil War, his personal convictions led him to be strongly opposed to secession, the war, and to slavery. By 1861, most of Mississippi was eager to fight and had no tolerance for those not in full support of the Confederacy. Holy smokes! Newt understood the situation pretty well and, in order to avoid persecution and possible execution, went ahead and enlisted in the Confederate Army. Soon after that, the 20 Negro Law was passed by the Confederate Congress. This absolved slaveholders who owned 20 or more from actually having to fight, thus cementing the conflict as a rich man's war but a poor man's fight. And in a short time after that, Newt found out that the Confederate cavalry had seized all his family's horses. Boom. Angry and frustrated, Knight deserted and made the long, dangerous journey back to his home in Jones County. Eventually, Newt was caught, but he refused to return to duty. And I'm like, duty, is a duty again. Subsequently, he was tortured and everything he owned was taken from him or destroyed by the Confederacy. Shortly after his family was left destitute, the Siege of Vicksburg was taking place. In the aftermath of the chaos that ensued, Knight took action. He raised a small army of 125 men from the local counties to defend themselves against the Confederacy. They became known as the Knight Company. Payow! They hid out in the wilderness and were aided by blacks and whites who were sympathetic to their cause. By 1864, President Jefferson Davis became aware of Knight's open rebellion and that they were, quote, proclaiming themselves Southern Yankees and resolved to resist by force of arms all efforts to capture them. Dun dun dun! Booyah! Eventually, a substantial Confederate force was brought in and the open rebellion was squashed. But Knight and a few others were never captured. Shortly, the war ended. And soon after, Union troops were in Mississippi, keeping order and protecting the rights of the newly freed slaves. And shortly after that, Knight was commissioned in the U.S. Army, charged with leading teams to distribute food to starving people in nearby counties and to rescue children who were still being held as slaves. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite a happy ending. Back then, the Republican Party was the progressive party that pushed for change, and the Democratic Party pushed back against them. Republicans were soon forced out of power, and inequality returned to oppress the newly freed blacks. This was done through intimidation and violence by groups such as the Ku Klux Klan. Sometime after 1875, Knight married former slave and insurgent compatriot Rachel. They lived on his farm and had several children together, although their situation was precarious because as you can imagine, an openly mixed race couple living together was a little dangerous in Mississippi in that time. Knight lived to the ripe old age of 85, passing away in 1922. And even though it was illegal for blacks and whites to be buried in the same cemetery together, he was buried next to his wife who had passed away in 1899 on their property. His epitaph reads, he lived for others. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to write in the comments area. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. together it's all it's all mixed up it's all it's all one it's all connected